Hey everyone. Before we get into the episode, I just wanted to warn you that during the interview with the special guest that you're about to hear, that there were some issues with uh, Skype, I believe, and the audio quality is not the best. Um, but I do want to implore you to stick around for the interview. If anyone out there listens to this and knows of a way to correct the audio deficiencies uh, in this episode, I would love to hear from you. Uh, give me some some hints, some helpful tips, whatever, uh, so I can avoid this in the future. So with that, I give you the episode with the special guest. Thanks for listening. Hi, this is Eric from Longbox Review at longboxreview.wordpress.com. Welcome to the show. Uh, today, uh, my usual co-host Travis isn't with us um, because he's he's not feeling well. So uh, wish him well. Hopefully, he'll feel better soon and he'll be back with me. Um, but joining me today is a very special guest. And if uh, longtime Longbox Review podcast listeners will remember, back in episode 24, around the beginning of May, I commented how I had. Um, uh, um, a new iTunes review for the Longbox Review podcast, and Travis and I were talking about that. And of course, we we uh, uh, this person who whose online or iTunes name was uh, Fukudome, I, I found out is how you pronounce that. Uh, wrote a very nice review and um, called us an awesome podcast, which I very much appreciated. And uh, as we were talking, Travis and I, uh, we decided that we probably should, you know, not, we obviously thanked this person for that great review, uh, but I think I quipped that uh, we should invite them onto the podcast as a thank you, uh, which I have done. So um, joining me in just one second, because I have to do some other th- other announcements, will be Mike Schulke from Illinois, uh, who is the person behind that nice review. Uh, but first, let me mention, because I should have done this before I got into the introduction, I apologize, Mike. Um, uh, I just wanted to mention, because uh, I haven't done it in a while, that the Longbox Review podcast is a proud member of the Comics Podcast Network, and you can also find Longbox Review podcast on Stitcher. So with that out of the way, Mike, how are you? Doing well today, Eric. It's uh, a little cold here in Chicago, but... Um... It's slightly warmer uh, and, and more able to be done when you're with friends and consider being on your show and uh, having listened to you for so long uh, to be uh, with a friend today. Oh, well, thank you very much. That's that's very nice. I could not have said that better myself. <laughs> so Mike has so uh, uh, as soon as episode 24 came out, uh, Mike actually emailed me and said, hey, I'm I'm uh, Fukudome. And uh, thank you very much for the for uh, the the thank you on the show and and so we, during the course of our correspondence, um, I invited officially my, invited Mike onto the show and it's taken us a while. Here it is, um, just past the midpoint of October, <laughs> and this was back in early May that we first uh, uh, contacted each other. But uh, you know our schedules finally worked out and here we are. We're going to talk about some comic stuff. We're going to talk about Mike's uh, reintroduction into comics. And uh, talk uh, actually about a few comics uh, at the, towards the end of the show. So, Mike, um, in your in your original email to me, uh, you said you were a third grade teacher in Illinois. Um, are you still teaching? I am. Uh, I've been promoted uh, fifth grade. Um, I jo- jokingly say to my kids that I've been trying for a number of years to pass that pass that third grade math test. Finally did, and now I can teach fifth grade math. It works out great. Oh, so you so you teach math? Um, math and uh, language arts, all subjects. Uh, I actually get to teach um, our targeted accelerated program, so I'm teaching sixth grade material to my uh, fifth grade students that I work with. Oh, very nice. Having a fifth grade son at home, it actually helps me remain a step or two ahead of him uh, when it comes to helping him with his homework. So. He hasn't quite figured out that dad uh, is as smart as what he thinks in math. He just happens to have taught it all uh, right before he has it for homework. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. Uh, I think that's really great. Um, uh, actually, one of the things uh, in my own life, uh, 
one of my goals actually from very young was to become a teacher. And I actually did do that for a while, although at the, at the, uh, the university level, I, I taught um, uh, essay writing to uh, incoming freshmen. Uh, so I have a great appreciation for teachers and uh, just just the art and craft of, of teaching. So uh, thank you for doing that. That's 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 a great uh, vocation to be in. I really appreciate it. Both my wife and I are teachers, and um, it's just something that we definitely see uh, a need for, especially from uh, people who are um, really interested in making sure that our kids. Uh, get the best they can because that's you know what we want for my son and daughter in their school. Um, we try to do each day um, just so that, that one day if they become president or uh, you know the surgeon that's operating on you, hopefully you provided the framework that you can uh, wake up after the operation. That's really important. You know? that's, that's a great way to look at it. It's exactly right too. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, um, so in, again, back to your email. I'm going to refer to that quite a bit, probably, at least at the, at the beginning here. Um, you mentioned um, that you had not purchased comics in a long time. So tell me about that. What? So, oh, wait, let, let me back up. Let, let, me, let, me, let me start at the very beginning. So I assume that you read comics uh, for a while and then stopped and then came back into it recently. So let me start at the beginning, Mike. Um, I'm really curious uh, what your... What, I, what I've been referring to you uh, in our email as your secret origin. Um, I'm always curious how people get started into reading comics, you know, why they love comics. Uh, and in your case, um, which I think mirrors a lot of people's uh, comic reading experience where, you know, they love comics, they read them for a while, but then, you know, because of various reasons, life stuff that happens, um, you know, they stop reading comics, uh, much like you. And, and so I'm really, cur really curious about that, and, and especially why you came back. So we'll, we'll get into that. But let's start at the beginning. Um, so what, uh, what started you reading comics? Well, I was uh, what you'd call a late bloomer when it came to um, reading comics. Um, I lived in uh, Georgia and Tennessee and Kentucky. And uh, believe it or not, in those places, uh, reading comics wasn't necessarily the big deal. It was more your Nintendo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, when I moved um, up towards Chicago, um, I actually uh, was going through Graham Cracker Comics, a local store that's nearby, and I came across um, Bond. And I did came across that when I was actually buying books for um, role playing. I played Dungeons and Dragons and Magic the Card Game, and was there more to purchase those, and actually came across the uh, comics at route. Um, and it was um, something that I really, really enjoyed, but being of limited funds and being uh, a teenager having to choose between car insurance or um, your comics, um, that quickly became uh, something when they began to split spawn into a bunch of different uh, issues. I just felt I couldn't keep up and uh, it kind of just uh, rubbed me the wrong way, I guess, and I was gone then for quite some time, and periodically I'd hop back on with the Star Trek Generations for a little while, or different things, but nothing really uh, caught my hip again, um, until my son, who's uh, just recently turned 11, um, I want to say like last December, uh, we were in, and again, it was, uh, I was playing Magic, funny enough, um, with my son, looking at different activities and things that we could do together. And while we were there playing the tournament together and spending some time together, um, Dawn, one of the, the, the ladies who works at Graham Cracker Comics, I just kind of turned to her. And I think it's as you're getting older, you're getting more nostalgic for things. And I, I really appreciate the print form as opposed to uh, digital. And I asked her, I said, what, what could you recommend to me? And she goes, well, are you into your superhero comics or things like that? And I go, not really. And she said, are you into things that are bizarre? And I'm like, why not? So one of the first comics she actually recommended to me that got me back into comics was Butcher, uh, Butcher Baker, the Righteous Baker. Ah, okay. Yeah, I read, I read that first issue. And that saga um, really opened my eyes to realize that comics weren't just all um, 
Superman or uh, Batman. And, um, there was a different genre out there that I, I really uh, latched on to. Excellent. Yeah, that that was a uh, and and that comic just recently, at least this I think it was solicited as as ending this month. Um, yeah, I I I picked that up by uh, uh, based on the recommendation of um, so I I get my comics at a at a store that's about two hours away. Uh, it's a great show. It's called the Comic Book Shop. You know, great name for a comic book shop, right? Um, and I've been going there for gosh, almost ten years now. Um, I get my comic, I get my comics elsewhere as well, but I'd still love to go to that shop. And there was a guy there that works there and, uh, he and I have somewhat similar interests, but he, he tends to, um, read some odd things at times. And he's always, he's always recommending, um, those things to me to read. And some, some of those things hit it off with me and others don't. And, um, Butcher Baker was one of those that I read. I'm like, what the heck is this? Uh, <laughs> As, you know, it wasn't my cup of tea, but, you know, I could see why it would be appealing to, to some readers out there. So I didn't continue with it, but I was really surprised that to see that it was um, uh, ending so soon. And then um, after that, it was uh, one of those things that uh, you know, I really enjoyed that to start with. But then there was definitely a long hiatus between the beginning and end of um, that series. Um, but it was solicited almost as much that it was only going to be a number of issues and I think they exceeded that uh, just by a little bit um, but then Mike the uh, manager for the store uh, recommended League of Extraordinary Gentlemen ah, which, yes. which is wonderful and then he also re um, recommended uh, Batman and uh, with the Greg Capullo and I, I must say that had me hook line and, and sinker and I would never have thought previous to that 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 would have been something that would have caught me as much as it did but ended up having to get into every batman series that was <laughs> out <laughs> yeah yeah well the 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 new 52 uh launch you know of just over a year ago now um that got me reading almost every bat title that they were putting out at that time and which was a, a huge surprise to me because i you know I, I love batman um um, uh, but I was really surprised at how many of the new titles that I, that I picked up with the new 52, because I was only reading maybe two or three before the relaunch. And then, you know, there were so many interesting looking, uh, uh, stuff coming out of the Batman family that I had to pick up pretty much all of it. I, I've dropped a few things along the way, uh, during that year, but. Um, I'm still enjoying quite a few of them, and and the the main Batman title with, uh, that you mentioned earlier with Greg Capullo and Scott Snyder is just fantastic. And and they're the nicest people in the world. I ended up meeting um, Capullo um, at our local local Chicago uh, comic convention over the summer. Nice. And he couldn't have been a more gracious and just wonderful person to. Um, be. I mean, he came out, took photos with everybody that was in line, um, took time to uh, go so far as each comic was a different color that I hadn't really noticed before. He had Sharpies that matched the color of every single one of the new Batman comics that were out. <laughs> That's great. So he color themed our comics. He even signed one for my son for the, the holidays and uh, put it in, in, and wrote, you know, to, to my son Sam and said, Beware of the court of owls. So it was <laughs> awesome, 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 awesome. Uh, that is that is really funny because uh, I, I had a similar, well, not not a, as personal, but I had a similar experience as you uh, when I went to the last Emerald City Comic Con in Seattle, Washington. Uh, Capullo was there, and the guy just won me over just just on his personality alone. I mean, you can't help but like him. And then I was never on Twitter before, and when I was waiting in line for him to come sign his lithograph of, of uh, Nightwing, um, there were other people that were on Twitter, and he was saying that he was, you know, a few minutes out and that he'd be there. And that actually got me on Twitter, and I started following him a lot of different artists. And it was nice to see that the same person that was there at the show was there online. And then you get other great people like um, Matt Hawkins, who, you know, with, with his think tank, I mean, they, they take the time to um, actually write back and forth with you, and they don't have to do that, but it's just it's great. Yeah, yeah, it's very nice. Okay, 
Um, let's see. So uh, I want to step back just one one second though, because I'm really curious. So what when when you were reading comics before, like we were talking about, where you where you, where you dropped out. So what were some of the things that you were reading um, initially? Um, a lot of my focus at the time had been on Spawn, and then um, was also reading the different Valiant and Image comics at the time. Okay. And uh, you know, it was really nothing that was specific that caught me. I mean, the first one that really caught and held was um, Spawn. And before that, I would kind of go to the comic book shop and pick things up that kind of looked good from time to time. And But there was nothing that really held um, my interest as much um, as that. And some of it, I think, just goes to go that I really didn't have any friends that read um, comic books. And um, most of them were into um, you know, Dungeons and Dragons or role playing. And you think that those would go hand in foot with each other, but it wasn't necessarily the case. So, um, you know, that was something that, um, you know, before when I was younger, it was more, you know, your video games and different things like that. And I have really um, just enjoyed it um, now that uh, I've kind of uh, been able to take a, a second look at things. And, and so how old is your son? Uh, my son's 11. Okay. He's, he's very much into it. And it's just a great relationship. Uh, one of the nice things about being a teacher is that, um, during that summer, we get a little bit more time together than um, people would normally be able to have. And um, we are constantly trying to find different things to do together. And so he has his own um, box of comics at home. Um, I have mine. And, we'll, we'll, and it's neat to see that he actually um, has his own tastes uh, in uh, comics that differ from mine. And then my daughter, who's five, um, loves Spider-Man. I don't know why. I, it's not anything that is um, a series that I follow myself, but she has her own little uh, Spider-Man statue in her room. And whenever we go to pick up our comics on Wednesday, she goes to that 50 cent bin and um, picks out a, a couple different Spider-Man comics that then she asks uh, her mom, who uh, much to her chagrin, has to read them to her for her bedtime books. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> So it, it, it's, it's really great. And now that uh, My Little Pony is going to be coming out, um, she's uh, you know equally excited for Spider-Man for spider and My Little Pony. How, how that's going to end up coming out, I don't know. But, <laughs> oh, that's you know, great. Local, my local comic book shop, I uh, just love it, though, uh, when we all come in. It's, it's hard. You don't see a lot of um, you know, women necessarily always into comics, especially young, young girls, and to have her have something that she likes so much. I told my wife, I said, anything that I can do to uh, encourage her comic book watching or anime watching or geekiness will just help hopefully hold off dating for when she's older. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, oh. and with that double standard, I already told my son, make sure not to tell the person that you're looking to date that you're into any of this. Um, <laughs> do what your dad did. Wait till you're married, and then you could slowly introduce things one at a time. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good plan, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Sage advice. Uh, uh, that that's great. You know, in some ways, Mike, you and I have, have very similar stories. Um, you know, because I have I have two young uh, children at home. Um, they're actually my granddaughters, uh, who live with us. Um, uh, we, we, we took them in about almost six years ago now. Uh, our older daughter was having some issues and, you know, we, we wanted to help out. And so they've been living with us for uh, all this time. And and just like you with your family going to the comic shop, we do the same thing uh, for the one that's in, in Spokane. Walk in and the girls always ask to get a comic. And, of course, I'm, I'm more than happy to oblige them. Um, although I, I guess I kind of failed in that I didn't really train them to go to the 50 cent box. They always grab something off the shelf for 2 or 3 99 but you know, I'm, I'm happy to do it uh, if it gets them interested in comics. So, And, it, and it's one of those things, too. It's uh, it's hard for the, uh, the girls in general that, you know, when she puts on the smile, she knows she has that. So I'm not saying she always gets them the 50 cent bin, but that's yeah. definitely my push to go to the store. <laughs> well, now, let me ask you, are you – so? You read comics, but are you are you a collector? Do you you know do you you mentioned your son has his own box, so I assume so. Yes, I definitely do, and it's um, one of those that I 
I um, have a, a growing space in my um, closet that um, before when I was younger, I was running into um, some financial problems. And um, I ended up having to sell my collection oh. uh, when, I was, when I was younger. And so I really didn't have anything from what I've had um, when I was younger, which, which hurts. Um, but now it's kind of nice that uh, I've got lots of room to grow in. Yeah, yeah. So how big was your collection back then? Um, I want to say that I had around like five, six hundred books yeah. um, that were, like I said, more. It wasn't necessarily the whole series of things, but like I picked up Sandman and different things from time to time. We would run with it for a little while. So it was just, you know, a, a kind of a hodgepodge of things that I had collected through the years being, um, you know, the time with the death of Superman and, you know, just different things that um, I was able to pick up. Um, and now um, with actually following uh, series more and with the, the launch of that new 52 and the same as you I ended up picking up Catwoman and um, the, the Batman titles and Suicide Squad and a bunch of image things and right now um, my collection again is um, right now at 300 and uh, growing so it's, yeah. it's it's a nice addiction I, <laughs> exactly <laughs> it very much is it and you know obviously I do a podcast so uh, it it and I, I have a, a somewhat, well, I won't say a large collection because I know people that have much more than, than I do, but but I have a pretty a sizable collection um, that I've continued all the way from basically 1978 on. Um, I've gotten rid of a few books over the years, man, that I wish I had not. Uh, but you know what? That's that's part of collection. You know, you, you think you don't need these anymore. And then, you know, 10 years, 15 years down the road, you're like, oh, man, I got to go find those issues again uh, and spend a lot more money on them than you did when you originally bought them. Yeah, it's the thing like with I mean, sorry, sorry to interrupt, but the, with your kids and stuff, it really is. It's when you start having um, kids of your own or different things that you really want to share with them, different things that you had from when you were younger, if it's books or movies or different things in it. So I really would do wish that I would have had my books that I had from before. Yeah, yeah. And I have to admit, um, so, I, I well, let me let me back up for a second. I, I wish you luck in continuing um, the comic book love with your children because, uh, well, it, for, for my grandchildren, it seems to be starting and hopefully will continue. But I failed miserably as a, uh, as a comic book fan to pass that along to my younger daughter. Um, she, uh, I tried, uh, but uh, it, it didn't stick. <laughs> but that's okay because I have another generation of kids to uh, to influence. So hopefully that will that will continue. But um, and they also love to to watch, uh, you know, the, the the cartoons that are out and and the the animated movies and and the live action movies. You know, like like we just had the Avengers come out and and uh, uh, well, that was a while ago. But um, they love to go to those movies with me, and I'm more than happy to take them. So, are your kids into watching uh, the, the the superhero stuff on TV and, and on uh, film? Definitely. So, and it's funny because uh, I couldn't get my daughter off of My Little Pony on Netflix to save my life. <laughs> so we were watching those same My Little Pony episodes, and not that they're not all right. I mean, they're definitely for a kids show, a decent show to watch. But when you've seen the same episode on Friendship a hundred times, uh, it begins to get old. Uh, but then we, with my daughter liking uh, Spider-Man, we did a lot of the, uh, the cartoon Spider-Mans were on, and she would sit there and watch through that. And somehow it was a little more easy to watch the same Spider-Man issue on that episode <laughs> than it was the My Little Pony. Yeah, yeah, I, I could see that. <laughs> and then my son and I, we go to all the different movies with my father um, and, and ourselves and just love it. I mean, it's really a good time, I think just in general, it just seems that, you know, comic books and the different things are a lot more accepted than they were um, when I was younger. Oh, yeah. And it's, it's one of those things where it's almost cool now uh, to, to like these things as opposed to before you'd have to have uh, you know, your box pushed way back in your closet and cover up with <laughs> things you had friends over. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's very true. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's definitely fun. And then we do the different comic conventions to get that was another thing that helped get me back into comics was um, I, I'm a big Star Trek fan and ah so am I we we um, we end up uh, going in my son and I would get our photos taken with different people from the Star Trek shows oh nice 
and so we have um, the, the last three years of him and I uh, in shots together, and um, it's going to be nice. I'm interested to see what happens with the photos as I'm older and uh, he gets older, and you uh-huh. know, we're still able to hold that up each year, but it's something that he looks forward to now and I look forward to now, and um, we've been able to get our pictures with uh, Patrick Stewart and Shatner and uh, Jordy LaForge and Data, and, uh, you know, it's been a lot of fun. But being at those kind of conventions for the perks of you know, seeing more of the Star Trek people, I start walking through the artist alley, and that was another thing that was, you see so many talented people and so many great ideas, and how can you not become interested in it? Wow, that, that is really cool. So, okay, so from one Star Trek fan to another, what's your favorite series? Uh, I would say that it's Next Generation, but I had missed um, Deep Space Nine. Oh. When, it first, when, it, when it first came out, um, I, for whatever reason, couldn't get into that first season. Just, I wasn't able to um, become hooked. But now on Netflix, it's almost even better uh, because my son and I, pretty much every week, we sit down and watch um, at least one episode, if not two a week and it's all new to us so um it, it's actually a lot of fun being able to sit there and watch it with him and there's times where he asked if he can watch ahead and i'm like no because i haven't seen any of them <laughs> but, it, but i can quickly see why people um love that show so very much i mean and how that that could rival um your next generation uh, thing because we're i, I want to say we're about halfway through season five and just really enjoying our time together very nice. Yeah, see that. I, that's you know, I was I was wondering about Deep Space Nine because that's actually my favorite series of of, of them all. Uh, right. So yeah, it, and and it doesn't get much love for some reason uh, with with the larger fandom. My my wife was. Uh, I started talking about that with her, and I said, you know, this Deep Space Nine is beginning to rival my love of Next Generation, and she was like, that's sacrilegious. I can't believe that you're <laughs> saying that. You're, you like Next Generation so much, but I'm like the story and um, the people, and then different aspects of uh, things that are in that show that aren't present in the others. And the fact that they can have some of those conflicts where you have so many more ships than what are in your normal one. It's almost like a cross between um, Star Wars and Star Trek, and it's really hooked my son. Well, excellent. So you mentioned uh, the comic conventions that you go to. So how many comic conventions are in your area throughout the year? Um, there's two big ones. There's the uh, Chicago Wizard Convention, which is, takes course over in the summer. And it's kind of like my son and I's last hurrah because it's always the weekend prior to school going back. And, ah. and that's what we've been doing the last number of years. Um, but then there's also the C2E2 uh, oh, convention, right. which, which takes place, I think, in April. And we've not been to that yet, but we're actually planning on attending that this year. Um, because the last, I want to say, two years, it seems like the focus was, which is happening, I guess, with more conventions from what I'm hearing, but the focus is more on the entertainment and wrestling and the wrestlers and different things. And, <laughs> and, and that's not necessarily what we're into. And so now um, the C2E2, I was talking to a bunch of different artists and things they said there is really uh, seems to be uh, a great place to be. So we're going to give that a go. But there's two big conventions that are by me. Um, and I feel fortunate to have that. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, we only have uh, the one Emerald City that's close to me uh, that that I go to in the early spring. So, um, yeah, that's nice to have that option to have a, a more than one. That, that's on my son's uh, and I's bucket list. Uh, really? For, to do the Emerald City convention and then also to try to do that monstrosity, which is San Diego. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I actually went to San Diego back in 1996, I think it was, and uh, it it wasn't quite what it is now. <laughs> and and I don't I don't know I, I Travis and I have had conversations about this on the show and and you know and off, off the show obviously, um, but we we've kind of decided that we probably don't need to go to San Diego, <laughs> just because of how crazy it would be. I understand how like, that would definitely be the case, and for for me, it's one of those things where it's like, I just want to go to almost say that you've gone, to get the t-shirt. That's true. 
uh, get your photo taken in front of whatever you know sign that's there, and then never go again. <laughs> yeah, that, that's true. Yeah, get yeah have your experience and then and then move on from that. That yeah, as you said, that monstrosity. Um, at what what about the New York Comic Con? Um, that's definitely one that we have on our list. I ended up talking to um, a couple different artists that was there, and I just asked them. Um, which would you recommend? And Emerald City was definitely one of the ones that kept on popping back up. Yeah, see, I, I've heard that a lot too. Uh, you know, I listen to a lot of other comic book related podcasts and, and, and their experiences there. Yeah, that's the one thing that keeps coming up is is how great of a show it is uh, from the creator's point of view. And, and you can tell um, it must be the people that you live by, including yourself, because everything that I hear is it's the, the people that are at the show that are running the show and then it's the fans and just how um, nice they are while they're there that makes the, the uh, convention for the artists. Well, that, that's, I, I hope that's true, at least in part. <laughs> so yeah, Mike, if you and your son ever make it out to uh, Seattle, you know, let me know. I'd like to, to meet up with you. That'd be great. I would really like that. I mean, it's uh, one of those things now we're trying to see if we can start a little uh, envelope in the sock drawer and uh, see if we can uh, uh, start collecting our money and get ourselves out of the state. Um, because it is one of those things when you go, um, you're not sure when you can go again. And you really want to make it an experience to remember and not just something to where you know, you're rushing through and trying to uh, not have the most fun you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. That's great. This is this this is I love talking with you, Mike. This is great stuff. Like you said, like when I when I listen to your podcast, there's a lot of I thought the same thing more than once, Eric. Where I'm like, there's a lot of uh, I have in common with, uh, with with you, and I think it's one of the things to where when I started um, when I started getting back into comics, your podcast and your website was one of the things that helped uh, cement a, a nice foundation for me to. Uh, keep on adding my comics to because I really felt that when you said that you like something, that it'd be something uh, the same way for me. And when I look at your weekly pull list and your overall pull list, um, a lot of what I started uh, getting into and reading ended up coming as a result of your podcast and um, your site. So thank you very much. Wow. Thank you. That's, that's, that's very nice to hear. I, I very much appreciate that. Um, uh, so since you brought it up, I, I was, I've always been curious. Um, how did you how did you find the the long box review? Um, I, I I love um, all things having to do with podcast and actually when I first got me into podcast were um, different uh, series that I find of people that were in Japan and one of the, the the awards that I ended up receiving when I got into teaching was uh, Fulbright Award and I was able to go over to Japan with um, about. 200 other um, teachers and educators from across the United States. And we were there for a month going to see elementary schools, middle schools, high schools, and colleges. And I had the time of my life. And um, being the price that it is to get out there, um, listening to people that were out there brought me a step closer. And when I was getting back into comics, it was an easy transition then to start searching out um, different people that were on podcast doing different things and I did a bunch of different searches and I kept on trying different uh, wording because um, I kept on finding there were shows um, that weren't popping up when you typed in um, you know, your comic books or different things and some of my shows that I ended up liking the most that are on here um, are ones that I found not necessarily in the main search it's, it's something I listen to on lunch break um, listen to on the car and um, also listen to while I do my um, antique clock repair with my father on the weekends. Oh, okay. Yeah, in fact, uh, that's one of the things that you had um, put in your review was uh, you wish comic book was in your title so I could so it would pull up in the iTunes search easier for others to find. So and and of course I mentioned in that episode 24 that I had I had put comic book in there in some fashion and I went I even went in and I didn't mention this on the show but I, I did go back in and and change the tags uh, to include a little bit more uh, hopefully easier search terms to get the long box review uh, more easily noticed in iTunes so you were instrumental in that so thank you again for that no problem you've got a fantastic show it needs to be heard by the masses you know <laughs> <laughs> 
Mike, you are awesome. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> let's, uh, Mike, if you don't mind, let's transition. Let's ta actually talk about some comics. So what is it that you are uh, reading now? Well, I have uh, quite a full list now um, each month, but some of my uh, my favorites are um, Think, Think um, Revival, uh, Dial H, and um, Hell Yeah, um, your, and then also uh, Harvest are some of the ones that I go through along with, like I said, the Batman series. Um, I'm still getting all the different uh, Batman uh, and Robin, Batman, Batman the Dark Knight, and all of those things, that Batman Incorporated, Unlimited. <laughs> um, because I think it's one of those things with not having read that title in, in the past. Um, it's still new to me, and uh, it, it's uh, one of those things where I, I can go through and not have to uh, deal with all the different story changes or uh, Dick Grayson being Batman or different things that have happened in the past. So um, it, it's been a lot of fun. So the new 52 relaunch that was uh, that that was somewhat helpful for you then, wasn't it? Uh, coming back into the Batman comics because it was well, you know, Bat Batman in a, uh, out of out of all the stuff that came up, though, um, you know, it kind of kept some of the previous history, but but it but it hasn't been burdened and weighted down by that history so much in the relaunch. So yeah, I think it's been a very good way to get people back into reading more Batman comics. It really is, and then um, just for the your you know the new audience and things, I've tried to pick up the different Marvel comics, and there's some um, that I do read that I um, you know enjoy, but for the most part, it's hard for me for, for someone that's not uh, you know caught up with all the different things that are happening on to be able to hop in and know what's going on, and that makes it a little bit harder for me to uh, enjoy kind of what's going on, and then it leads me to where you know I'm, I'm also reading Planetoid and then the Peter Panzer Faust series and the Spider and the, the Beeps and different things because I'm able to get on when they're starting and you know it, it's a lot easier for me to uh, I'm really get into the, the stories. Yeah, definitely. That uh, and it's funny because a lot of the titles you've mentioned are titles that I really, really, really wanted to get and you know because you know I would. I have limited funds, <laughs> so I, I can only get so many titles, and um, I, I was not able to get like hell yeah I wanted to get, um, but I really wanted to get uh, a few a few more of the ones that you have on your list. If you ever you know want, you can uh, make sure to hook up a uh, uh, over the uh, Express FedEx and uh, send some your way, you know, so you can get caught up. One of the nice things with not having read for so long is uh, you know, able to pick up those new things. Yeah, yeah. So, do you read? Um, do you read? I think because I think I mentioned earlier in our conversation, you mentioned something about the digital comics. Do you do you, do you read anything digitally only? Um, no, there's um, no digital titles right now that I'm currently reading. Um, I would love to have an iPad um, to be able to do that, but I found that when I've tried to read some things on my phone, um, it's just not conducive to it. Yeah. And. Um, being with the young family that I had, being able to sit up, sit up a computer uninterrupted, uh, really doesn't happen. So <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> it's one of those things I can definitely see where um, there's the future in that, and it's definitely appealing to be able to carry around your entire collection on your iPad um, or the device that's you know comparable to that, um, and be able to read it whenever you want to. But it's just one of those things I, I really um, have, you know, when you're you're reading them that way, I just feel a disconnect sometimes as to what you have when you're actually holding something in your hands. And I, that even comes with um, books and, you know, versus the new e-readers and things that you have out. Um, it's just something that uh, even my kids in my classroom, um, a lot of them are familiar with your, your movies and TV shows or comic books. Uh, or not, I mean, not comic books, uh, but the cartoons, but they're not familiar with the comic books. Mm -hmm. And I have different titles that are in my classroom, and it's amazing to see um, how much uh, love that my fifth grade students have for the different titles are there and how much they really enjoy reading them and can't wait for me to bring new ones uh, in when I'm able to. That's really good. So you, 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 bring, do you, you bring your books to the class or you buy extra books to bring into class? 
Um, I bring extra books uh, that are in there from like the 57 is really what I target. If there's um, Spider-Man, Superman, if there's um, Thor or Avengers or different things that I can put in their hands um, that are just going to get them interested in reading. I don't care what they're reading. And um, to have them have that, I really hope that some kids that aren't necessarily into uh, comics uh, per se will uh, end up taking that. And anything, I mean, it's like when your kid asks to go to the bookstore, um, how can you say no when uh, <laughs> when they're like, uh, I'd like to buy a new book or I'd like to buy different things that are there. I'm like, when you're, you know, as a parent and things, you're, you're always trying to encourage that. Yeah, that's really neat that you do that. I, that that's, a, that's a great idea. Uh, let's see. So let's uh, let, let's talk about some specific titles that, that you're reading that we, we had discussed uh, over email. Mostly because I read these too, so I, ha- I can I can at least speak to them somewhat knowledgeably. <laughs> um, I, and I, I uh, let's start with Batman just real quick, just real briefly. Um, and mostly because I, I've talked about this on on a more recent episode uh, when I'm reviewing my New 52 one year later type stuff. But um, uh, we were, I already mentioned how Batman, the main Batman title, is just really awesome, and we I think we agree on that. Yes. And uh, my my next favorite in that line is Batman and Robin. I would agree 100 percent that um, Damien and him and their relationship that's uh, coming along in that series is just uh, as a father myself, it's uh, almost something that I connect uh, easier with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder how much that plays into it. You know, the you know being a father myself, obviously. Um, just the, just the connection you get that 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 re, the the examination of that relationship, and it is like as you're getting older, it's different things that would appeal to you when you're younger, and and just having the more experience, life experience that you have, um, I think really does. And when you throw in bad cow, how can you not like that? I'm <laughs> bad cow. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, and and uh, and the reason I keep bringing, uh, I keep talking about, and I you know I write about on the blog uh, about uh, Batman and Robin is, to me it seems like it's it doesn't get the attention that I think it deserves out out of all the Bat books. And, you know, it's it, it, one of the things where, it, in some way, your um, video game crowd with like the Arkham Unhinged or the Dark Knight movie having been out um, are titles that might have that. And for some reason, um, there's people that I talk to when I talk to about that Batman and Robin, um, that Damien seems to go one way or another with people. Either they, he um, rubs them the wrong way and comes off as um, like a, a punk kid, or um, it's somebody that they really connect to. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've, I've heard the exact same thing about Damien. And, and you know, quite honestly... Um, now I did not, like I said, I did not read a whole lot of Batman stuff uh, before the relaunch, and I, Damien did kind of rub me the wrong way at first. But I quickly realized um, through Grant Morrison's wonderful characterization that this was a character that was interesting, and I needed to pay attention to him. And and he's definitely um, grown on me over the years. And one thing that was nice for me was I was um, not necessarily on that relaunch um, at the start. So I was able to take um, four books and read them one after another. So I think that that helped me with um, the characters because I wasn't waiting for the next month to have them come along. Ah. It was definitely a benefit on my, my behalf. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's, uh, let's move on to some independent titles that we're both reading. The first one, uh, uh, Mike, remind me, you, you are reading Mind the Gap. Is that correct? I am. I, I, I am one of the series was again recommended by Don um, with my local comic shop. And it, again, I almost uh, have that like a different series when you get that sci-fi or a different set that's not necessarily your superhero based um, are ones that I'm drawn to more. And this definitely is that. Yeah, so I, 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 I've been reading that. And, um, and so... The, the main reason I started to pick it up was, um, well, one, Image Comics is just really hitting it out of the park with a lot of their new titles that have been coming out. And I saw this, and I, I, the, the whole idea of this mystery, um, trying to figure it out and all this stuff, plus uh, the art by uh, Rodin Esqueo, um, 
who does the the covers for Morning Glories. And I, I thought, well, if this guy is doing um, interior work for Mind the Gap, then I got at least got to see it. I got to pick it up just to see uh, because his his I don't know if have you have you looked at Morning Glories, Mike? No, but if you, um, I will gladly send some of the titles that um, you don't currently have and trade for Morning Glories because I've heard bad <laughs> about them. But again, with uh, cat, cat funds, it's going to be one of those that I'm going to have to work through probably in trade paperback. Yeah, I and I actually recommend you do that. And that's actually how I read them because um, by the time I, I got on board with Morning Glories, you know, I, trying to find all those back issues, I just decided, ah, screw it, I'm going to, I'm going to. Uh, read the trades and it actually i think is that is one of those books that i think is a better read if you can you can read uh, five or six issues at a time and do you feel um in your opinion that mind the gap kind of falls into that same category um not necessarily in the first early um, issues but with ones that have been coming out as of late i almost um, feel that this would be a nice uh, trade paperback just all together one being able to go from beginning to end to see what's happening because with that gap in time between each issue coming back you almost have to reread just to be able to catch everything when you're going through again on a second time yeah i, I agree I, I think this would work much better as a trade even though they put you know the, the very first page of each comic is our story so far and they give you the rundown of everything um yeah i i think it would be a better a better read and and quite honestly um this book, I, I'm, I'm, I think I'm coming to the end of my involvement with it, uh, just because, the, to me, the, the mystery, which is seems to be the thrust of it, um, the reason for reading it, I'm not really getting into it. I, I, well, I, I'm so happy to hear someone else say that, so I don't feel that I'm off on my own and crazy, and uh, for, for feeling the same way. That's where I was talking with my. Uh, just basically saying, um, you know, I may just wait for this to be out in one big um, book and then um, read it all together because I think my enjoyment of it. It's nice to hear, you know, like you said, <laughs> that somebody else is thinking the same thing because I was starting to think, well, maybe I'm just wrong. You know, sometimes you read a book and and everybody, you know, is is gaga over it and you're like, well, I don't see what the deal is. So, you know, maybe it's me. Um but but yeah, this it's nice to hear that I'm not the only one. Although I will admit that the latest issue uh, that I read, which was number five, uh, which was giving us um, Dane's backstory, that I really enjoyed, and that's what I'd kind of like to see more of from this series. And that's one I've not read because I was purposely um, grabbing um, or wanting to hold on to the comic so that I could do maybe like two in a row or three in a row. Ah. Uh. And have that where I can just read from beginning to end because for me um, it's even with that intro that you said you know they have to help remind you what happened um, it's hard enough for me to remember where I parked my car when I go to the grocery store <laughs> so you know remembering what happened a month ago it, it's pretty difficult yeah well, and and for me it's not so much um, getting reminded of the plot I I read stories for character and for interesting ideas and uh, not necessarily just speaking you know how how we get from point a to point b in the story right and and uh those those recaps are very much you know plot driven what's what's happened since la you know from the from the beginning of the series till now and i don't grab onto those details what i grab onto are characters and i'm not seeing a whole lot of i mean there's some interesting character moments in this book but when when i'm not looking forward to reading about the main character of, of the series, there's there's something wrong with it, I think. Well, it's one like with uh, the title Planetoid. Um, that's one of the series that um, I feel it doesn't matter that I haven't read uh, between uh, week or month to month. And it's one of those things that's like, I just really like the main character that's in that series. And the story of him being on the planet, having big crash land, and the story that's with Silas able to uh, go through is something that with that science fiction I, I latched on to, and I love seeing come every month. Yeah. Um, so let, let's let's go to the next title that's on my list to talk about with you, which is a much better book, in my opinion. 
<laughs> um, and that's Revival. That is a, definitely uh, one of the, the series of when I know that that's in my pull box, um, I am one happy uh, customer, uh, consumer <laughs> when I when I go to the comic book shop. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the artwork. I mean, how can you not be when you, even if that wasn't something that in the uh, previews uh, episodes where you're kind of talking about different things were coming up. If you just saw that book going by in the store, how could you not pick that up? It's just so beautifully done. So what do you think of the just just the story in general and the characters involved? Well, I kind of like the fact uh, with, with the different situations they're putting everybody in. I mean, you're, you're looking at the main character with Officer um, Dana and how, how she gets introduced to somebody she's going to be working with in the, the bar situation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it was just one of those, then her involvement with her um, father and sister and just everyone in that town. I just can't wait to find out how all of this is happening or how it's tied together. And um, I really feel it's doing it a disservice if you tell people that it's um, like a, a zombie genre. But then I really don't feel that it is. I mean, it's 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 great. Well, yeah, it, it's funny you mentioned that because when I first heard about this um, series, that was my initial reaction because I, I I like The Walking Dead, uh, the, the the comic and the TV series, um, but you know, along with vampires zombies these days is in comics are just they're everywhere and and you got to be really careful about that as uh, f me as a reader of comics the creators need to be careful in the sense that um if you overdo these things you know it loses it loses its um re uh readfulness i'll just i'll just make up a word here um <laughs> I'm going to use it on Monday with my kids. So. Okay. <laughs> so, so, but, but, you know, but, but, but that's a disservice because this book is not, it's not, I mean, yes, they're the, the dead coming back to life motif of, of zombies in general. Yes. This book has that, but it is not strictly a, a zombie book um, that, you know, I think most people would, would, who, you know, when they, when you throw the word zombie at them, they, they think about flesh eating monsters, right. That come back from the dead. Well, that's not quite what we have here, and I hope they don't go into that territory. And I and I I rather doubt that Tim Seeley and Mike Norton are going to do that. Um, but the strength of this book, to me, like I was saying before, you know, character is what draws me into a, into a story, and that's what we have here. You know, that that the relationship between Dana and her father, especially. I mean, that guy is that that dad. He's a piece of work. Um, <laughs> And, and so, and, you know, not to mention they're both cops and, you know, he, that relationship itself would be interesting, but, but, you know, they have an adversarial relationship on top of that. And then her keeping her sister's secret, even though we don't know the origins of what happened with her, but keeping that from her father, you know, you know, that's going to be an explosive situation when that comes to light. And, and, and it is, it's beautifully done. I mean, the different characters, everybody that's in this is just uh, interesting and every part of it you want more and more and more from it and the only thing that i'm really waiting for since it takes place in wisconsin is some sort of mention of cheese if they could throw in a cheese reference I, i'd be even happier with it if that's possible <laughs> yeah that would be good that would be very good too yeah this is this is a book that uh, i'm looking forward to each and every month myself uh i can't wait to find out you know what's going on here i mean the whole why the dead are coming back um, yeah, that'll be interesting, but you know, what, what about that white alien creature? What, what's going on with that? And, and, and just, uh, just again, the relationships between all of these characters, how this event affects them. I think that's just a really, really cool premise. It's, it's almost, um, right now, like when you get a title that's like this, it's, it's back when you were, uh, first dating somebody and <laughs> your, your relationship is going well. You're just hoping that nothing happens to mess it up. And that's really where I feel my relationship with revival is at this point in time. I'm like, please don't, please don't say that you, uh, you know, keep, collect toenail clippings on the side of your bed or do something bizarre. Not that I do that personally. <laughs> that's a great way to think about it. And actually, I mean, you, you can apply that to any comic, really. I mean, that's 
even the ones that I've been reading for years, you know, it's the same thing. It's like, please don't mess this up. This is good stuff. You know, oh, uh, for example, um, I don't know. Are you reading Daredevil at all? I am not. And that's a series I keep on hearing fantastic things about. Oh, my um, gosh. It's so good. And, and, and it's one that, um, like I said, when I was first get, like when we're getting into comics and things, it's hard for me sometimes to make that jump into the um, superhero genre. And I really feel like I'm missing out. Um, as a result of that. And it's one of those, I'm definitely going to have to start making more of a concerted effort. Um, to get, I mean, I love the independence, and I think that's where most of my focus will be. I think in some ways I do need to make sure I'm not missing out on those great stories that involve the superheroes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, oh, well, if, you know, if you want to merge the two together, Mike, here's another recommendation for you uh, independent title, at, but, but with superheroes, and that's Danger Club. I, I did not read that, and I'm writing that down as you speak. <laughs> that, I uh, when I saw that in previews, and and I and this is one of those books. You know, sometimes you 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 just you you find a book and you just champion it. You know, with with anybody that will listen to you. You know, uh, read this book, read this book. Um, that's the book for me that that I've been I've long been championing ever since I saw it in previews. And you know, the premise is very simple. It's uh, basically it's. And, and and I hope I'm not doing a disservice uh, uh, to the creators when I say this, but it's kind of like uh, Teen Titans meets uh, the end of the world type situation, right? Because uh, some catastrophic event has has occurred, and all of the world's adult superheroes went off to to take care of it, and they never came back. And all that are left are the young heroes, the sidekicks, and and they have to deal with everything the, the fallout from that. And it's just been a delight. And that's one, um, I'm like, that definitely sounds like something that would be, um, uh, definitely something that would appeal. In some regards, that's kind of like with the, the title Super Crooks. Where oh, yeah. The uh, the villains, then at that point, more the focus on them. And they're like, if we're, if we keep on getting beaten up over in point A, why don't we go elsewhere? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that was a good book, too. All right, Mike, that's, that's all I had uh, planned to talk on the show. Is there anything else that you wanted to bring up? No, I just, I really, really, really um, greatly appreciate your time. Like I said, uh, um, my father and I on the weekends, we do um, anti-clock repair. And um, when I'm driving back and forth uh, to his house, it's about like an hour and 45 minutes to go for a trip. Um, I am always pleased to share that drive um, with you and uh, your show. It definitely makes uh, going there or coming back all that much more easy. <laughs> well, thank you again. I, I appreciate that. Hey, uh, speaking of your uh, your your dad and, and your uh, antique clock, or, um, do you have do you guys have a, a web page or some sort of online presence that you'd like to plug? Sure, I love shameless plugs, so I will definitely be a part of that. <laughs> um, but um, if you uh, for the listeners and things uh, that think. Um, that in their house something's been missing for quite some time. It's it's really an antique clock. Um, it's antique clock collector, all one word. Well, Mike, thank you again. Um, it's it's been great talking with you. I, it's it's always fun to to talk to to a fellow comic fan, especially when you seem to have a, a lot in common. So I, I very much enjoyed this conversation with you. And on that note, I think we'll end the show. Uh, Mike, thanks again. Uh, for joining me on this conversation. I appreciate it very much. And uh, I wish you well in everything that you do. Thanks, Eric. And I look forward to hearing this. Excellent. Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, Be sure, everybody, to um, uh, send me some feedback about this episode. Leave comments at the blog at longboxreview.wordpress.com. You can contact me at Twitter. You can email me at longboxreview at gmail.com. And uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks again, Mike. I appreciate it. Thanks for listening.